The background tells you all that this is what everyone is hoping for, that COVID-19 pandemic will soon be over. One of the issues that has been hotly contested with regard to the treatment and prevention of COVID-19 has been ivermectin. Since the first video, I haven't seen a lot of dislikes on my video, which is always acceptable, considering that there are a lot of issues, pros and cons on certain issues. And the use of ivermectin for the prevention and treatment of COVID-19 is one of them. So here, I'm going to provide you with some more views and data regarding ivermectin. So as patients or as physicians, you'll be more aware of what are the evidences and what are the recommendations of the different societies at the present time. If you like my YouTube channel, I hope you continue to click like on my video, the notification bell for more videos to come. So today, we're going to discuss about some of the latest views on ivermectin for COVID-19. What's the latest? And why is it that debate is continuing? After the first video on ivermectin was published, there were a lot of questions. Why is it that there were no evidences that I presented in my video? Actually, there were. There were, if you listen to my talk. But what I'm going to do today is to present to you the evidences and the recommendations of the different reputable societies. So the first one is a statement on the use of ivermectin as treatment for COVID-19 by the local FDA together with the different medical societies of the Philippines. If you will note, this statement on the use of ivermectin was based on the systematic review of six randomized controlled trials of good mythological quality. Again, not all studies can be reviewed because some studies were not deemed enough in terms of mythological quality to advise us on what to do with this drug. So based on this systematic review of six randomized controlled trials, you can clearly see here the results that the use of ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19 does not reduce mortality risk, meaning there was no reduction in death. It is also not associated with a definite benefit in terms of other clinically important outcomes, like clinical import improvement at day 6 to 10, clinical deterioration, nor the need for mechanical ventilation, meaning there was no difference among the different groups of people who were given ivermectin or who were not given ivermectin. Furthermore, it does not significantly reduce the duration of hospitalization and reduce the time to resolution of symptoms, meaning there was no difference whether the patient is on ivermectin or not in reducing the length of time the patient has symptoms and the duration of time in the hospital. Likewise, the rate of hospital discharge at day 10 to 14 does not differ significantly between those given ivermectin or standard of care. Concluding that based on the current evidence, they clearly show that we do not recommend the use of ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19 and that it has not been proven to significantly reduce mortality or improve other clinical outcomes. They ended the recommendation that this will be updated. We will be open to changes in the recommendation as more evidence is generated from ongoing trials. Similarly, in the United States, the use of ivermectin has also been hotly contested. There are groups of individuals or physicians 
who are lobbying for the use of ivermectin as a prevention and treatment of COVID-19. So here's what the US FDA has to say. The US Food and Drug Administration in their website regarding ivermectin clearly states that the FDA has not approved ivermectin for the use in the treating or preventing COVID-19 in humans. Yes, it has been approved at very specific doses for parasitic worms. Of note, taking large doses of this drug is dangerous and therefore can cause serious harm. Never use medications intended for animals on yourself. The FDA also has not reviewed data to support the use of ivermectin in COVID-19 patients to treat or prevent COVID-19. However, again, some initial research is underway. They noted that taking a drug for an unapproved use can be very dangerous and that is true of ivermectin. You have to be very careful also in the sense that ivermectin products for animals are often highly concentrated because they are used for large animals like horses and cows. Moreover, the FDA reviews drugs not just for safety and effectiveness of active ingredients, but also for inactive ingredients, and thereby these inactive ingredients found in animal products aren't evaluated for the use in people. They further stated that for the meantime, continue to do the effective ways to limit COVID-19, that is to wear your mask, stay at least six feet from others who don't live with you, wash hands frequently, and avoid crowds, and of course, the vaccination. Furthermore, rumors online have also suggested that the counterpart of the United States, which are the European authorities, were also ignoring ivermectin as a miracle drug for COVID-19. The fact is the Emergency Medicines Agency, which is the counterpart in Europe of the FDA, have actually reviewed the latest evidence and they came up with this conclusion. European Medicines Agency, which reviewed the latest published evidence from lab studies, observational studies, clinical trials and meta-analysis, which means all evidences so far presented to them as of March of 2021. They found out that lab studies found that ivermectin do work by blocking the replication of SARS-CoV-2, but at much higher ivermectin concentrations than those achieved with the currently authorized doses. The results also from clinical studies were varied, with some studies showing no benefit and others reporting a potential benefit. However, most studies that EMA reviewed, again, were small and had additional limitations, including different dosing regimens and the use of concomitant medications. Thereby, the European medicines agencies had this to say that currently available evidence is not sufficient to support the use of ivermectin in COVID-19 outside of clinical trials. This debate has been ongoing, I think, for a while, but more so locally, more so in the United States, more so in Europe. Therefore, it is time for us call for sobriety, meaning let's wait for new data for more clinical trials as more trials are underway. The group called the Healthcare Professionals Alliance Against COVID-19, which is an alliance of around 160 professional medical organizations in our country, is actually calling for sobriety on ivermectin. Let's stop these insults. Let's stop this debate. And this is what they have to say. <laughs> we are aware of the ongoing debate over ivermectin's effectiveness for the prophylaxis and treatment of COVID-19. The Healthcare Professional Alliance Against COVID-19 believes a call for sobriety is needed. 
The exchange of opinions is confusing and already anxious public. We do acknowledge everyone's goal. We want to return to normalcy, to life as we know it. Families being together, friends and colleagues gathering without fear, travelers seeing the world again. The possibility that ivermectin is an effective drug for the treatment and prevention of COVID-19 is indeed something worth looking into. In fact, the best proof is that the world is taking this seriously the fact that there are now 73 ongoing clinical trials on its use. However, these trials are also proof that the final verdict is pending. Once there is definite proof of benefit or harm, all these trials will be stopped by the investigators themselves. Fortunately, the trials on ivermectin entail short follow-up period of 28 days. So we expect to have more data and evidence on its effectiveness in the next several weeks. So let's wait for the results. If indeed it is effective, I will again be here. I'll probably be presenting the data to all of you and say ivermectin works, or I will say, sorry, ivermectin does not work. Then we should be thankful for another addition to our list of effective COVID-19 treatments. If it is not, then let's move on and continue the search for more treatments that work. As healthcare professionals, we must be responsible for the unintended effects of our actions, especially if they can lead our people to confusion. The war is against the pandemic and then not against each other. The medical and the scientific community is actually not against the use of innovative drugs for COVID-19. As we see our hospitals now bombarded with cases of COVID-19, we really want if we can use drugs that can help reduce the duration and of course morbidity and mortality of our patients. The case of ivermectin may actually be similar to hydroxychloroquine. It used to be the gospel truth of some of those who really want to believe that hydroxychloroquine is helpful for COVID-19. Until the evidence fell flat on its face, this after they switched to other drugs, this after they have bombarded the people with some pseudoscience and skewed facts and even removed their mask to show their confidence in this drug. Remember, when we talk about new drugs, it's after all risk and benefits. We don't like to put harm or put more harm on our patients. And therefore, we really try to wait for evidences based on good clinical trials. Yes, it may not be completely harmful, but it is also not completely harmless. And the meds floating around right now as long as they haven't passed the FDA scrutiny, scrutiny is for me still debatable. I am for evidence-based and I am here to tell you that as of now, we'll wait for more data and see you again soon if we have more clinical trials to prove that they do or they don't work.